Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today we're going to do some pretty exciting stuff. We're going to do random forest model classification on taxpayer information. So this is information, the data set that we have is actual taxpayer information the IRS has. Now they're obviously they're not going to give it to you, but well, let's take a look at what we have here. So this is the data set, and they have household income, household debt level, they have whether you're married or not, college graduate, average household age, uh, cars, number of cars in the household, and then whether or not you filed taxes in 2017, 2016, 2015, and of course, what is your preferred political party? How do you vote? Democrat, Independent, Republican. The IRS does have this information uh, on everybody out there. Um, so we do not have Social Security number listed here, or person's names, or anything like that. So. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to determine, and I'm going to work through this just like we would with a data analysis or a data science project. So you have a problem. The problem here is, you can see right here, we want to predict the political party preference for a subset of taxpayers based on the available attributes. So those attributes like household income and whether you're married or not, we have to go and measure those and we have to see how important they are. You know, so some will determine more of what our political preference is than others, or maybe none of them do, but that's what we're going to determine here. So let's first start off with here are the packages that we're going to be using. So if you don't have these packages, use the install dot packages right up here, just like this for the E1071 package. You're going to need Coret, Performance Analytics, Random Forest, and E1071. Then next what we do is we load in our data. So right here, this line, let's open this up so you can see this. And by the way, this graph down here on the bottom is showing where we're getting higher percentage uh, accuracy, and then that will do that at the very end. But let's minimize that so you can see the whole line here. So this is the whole line where we bring in our tax data. In this case, it's a CSV. So uh, being it's a CSV, we have slightly different uh, t uh, terms that we have to use here, uh, rather or uh, date or code, than we do for an uh, Excel sheet. So you have read.csv, we bring it in, here's the location of it, and strings as factors equals true. That makes it so that they're not read in as characters or read in as factors, which we'll need that for down below. Now again, here's our problem listed. We need to, where we're determining the political party preference for a group of people. Obviously that data set you saw that that's there, but watch what happens here. So we're gonna, we wanna create a supervised learning method uh, using random force classification to generate and test predictions based on this data set. So first, I've got three different methods here we're going to do. And the first one's going to be in part one, the second one's going to be part two, and the third one will be part three. So first, what we need to do for method one is we need to check for missing values, because missing values will hurt the classification and the model that you're going to create. So we need to use this summary data. So if we do this, this will give us the data on each of our columns or attributes. And we can look, are there any NAs? NAs would be at the bottom. I don't see any, so we should be good there. If we did, I have this commented in here where you can easily use this code right here, uh, which is this data to replace data true L apply data NA.aggregate. This code right here will replace it with the mean of the data. So, uh, but we don't have that here, so I don't need to do that. Then what I like to do is I like to put the data that I have that I'm working with into a new data frame because I, you know, that way I can always go back to the data frame without having to reload in the data set or anything like that. It's right there. It's very simple to do. I just put it into data and a data two. So I still have data and I have now data two. So we got a thousand and four objects of those variables in here. And next what we're going to do is this right here. We want a yes, no column because that's how we're going to predict. If they're not in a yes no column, we can't predict it. So we've got data to poll party, which well data to dollar sign poll party. So that's the new column making. And then we got if else data to political party equals Democrat and then it's yes or no. So if it's equal to Democrat, we want it to be yes or no based on that in this column. Okay. So if it's either a yes, it's to equal Democrat or it's not. And then it goes into this column here, the new one called data to dollar sign poll party. Then we changed from text to factor to make sure if you haven't already done this, you need to do this um, because otherwise the train function down below will not work with it. So basically it's just this little bit of code right here. It says as dot factor and then your 
uh, the new uh, column in there. And the reason being is before we did it, remember we, we already did it to the whole data set that we brought in that data frame, but the problem is this is a new uh, column in there, so it will not be set to factor. So in this case, we're using this right here to set that new column to be in factor. And then next, what we got to do is we got to set it to null because we don't want, uh, or for the political party. So this is the original one that had the Democrat, Republican, or uh, Independent in it. We're setting that to null, so now that is no longer there. So we don't have that data anymore. Now, the new one, what we're going to do is we're going to chart. This is where we go and uh, create a correlation chart. And this gives you a little bit of data on what we have. So let's take a look at this. It should show it in a second here. Uh, there it goes. So um, this tells you the breakdown of each of the columns, each of the attributes, and how they're broken out. Some are more broke, you know, are more spaced out than others. Some have patterns in them, and we can look at that to get an idea. And this will help play into the strength of some of these attributes in a little bit. Next, now remember this is method one, so we're just going straight into making our model here. This is where we fit the actual model. Uh, in this case, you're going to use this column right, or this code right here. Remember, I told you the train uh, function. If you do not have it in factor, uh, the data type is factor, then it will not work. So make sure you go back and do that if you didn't already. And in this case, what we're doing is we're doing this on this column here, poll party and that's in data two, make sure you have it data two, not data one, or data, and uh, that's the data frame. Method equals random force, tune length equals five, and uh, number equals 12, and class probability is equals true. So this is what you want right here for that, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we wanna see the results of our model. What are they? So by typing this in, model results, see that right there, we get this. This tells you your accuracy right now, your 65% accuracy. So keep in mind, you're not always going to have 95, 99% accuracy with things. It depends on the data you're looking at. It's still going to be very good with this, and you'll see in a minute here. So we got 65% accuracy. You see it right here. Let's see if I can highlight this for you right there. Right there, 0. 0.65. That's our accuracy. Okay. Now what we can do is we can predict this using this new model. Okay. So see this? We're going to predict. We're use the predict function of our new model which is this right here model and for the original data set so see how I'm not using data too I'm now going back to data that's why I didn't want to change that one and we're getting the probabilities for it so let's do this so we run this then what we do is we go back and we look at the head of the predicted data right so this is predicted data that we've created now so let's take a look at that that is our new predicted data is it is it a Democrat Remember, that's what we did here. We could have done Republican or we could have done Independent. It doesn't matter, and I'm not showing any political preference in any way, shape, or form here. So it doesn't matter to me if you vote Democrat, Republican, or Independent. Let's be clear on that. But here for this, we picked Democrat. So it's saying here, no, the first person is much higher that they're yes, and the second person that they're no, and so on. And you've got the uh, percentages for that. Now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new party prediction column, okay, based on this data for comparison. So what we do here is on the original data set, we now have a new, we're going to create a new uh, column called data dollar sign party. And what we're going to do is you're going to use this code right here, if else predicted data dollar sign no, okay, so if the predicted data, which is this, we just created as data frame, if the column no is greater than the column yes, we got zero and one. Okay, those are the values that we're going to use. So we want to see if it is Democrat or not, and that's how we do that. Then we ha we have two tests down here to do if we want. So let's do this first. Then let's take a look at that. So that's in the original data. So if we go here to data, we've got it right here. And if we go across for all these people, we now have political party and party. Remember, so party is the one we just did where it's one is what? Democrat, right? And zero is non-Democrat. So that would be independent or Republican. It doesn't differ or differentiate between the uh, two. We just grouped them together. We just wanted Democrat in this case. And if you go down this, take a look at how accurate this actually is. So 
we don't have to be 100% to be super accurate. Look at this. Democrat won. Democrat won. Democrat won. Democrat won. Democrat, Democrat won, won. And anything that's not is not. Look at that. Over and over again, it's correct. So if we go back to our uh, original data set here, or the original, uh, where did we put it here? Let's go all the way back here. Uh, there we go. Is that it? There we go. Okay, that's what happens when you have too many pages open here of all kinds of data that my computer had to restart. And I lost a bunch of this stuff from earlier, but that's fine. So in any case, where we are right now is this. So we've done the predicting of the data. We put it into a new column called party, right? And we can actually test that if we wanted to now. We could actually go and say, are there, you know, where is it equal to one? If we want to do that. Or we could do subset, you know, I only want to see where it's Democrat. We could do that too. So you can look at test. And if we look at test, here it is. How many of those are Democrats? Oh, they all are. See, look at that. Are there any that are not? So that's how you would test this if you wanted to. If you had a big data set, you don't want to just scroll through it. So um, again, here's the code for either of those two, Okay, which is subset. In the first one, it's data. And then party equals equals one, because that's where it is. The next one, what we've done is we've already created this test. right? So we created this data frame called test. And the second one is I'm just looking at that and saying, okay, where is it Democrat? And obviously you saw it's all Democrat. So this worked, okay? So again, one is Democrat, right? That's what we created here, and zero is not. So if no is greater than that, it gets a zero. If it's not, it's the reverse of that, then it gets a one. That's what this code did right here. And uh, so basically right now, here's your results for method one is we have a 65% accuracy right now, but it's still very accurate because basically we saw there 100% of the Democrats were identified once we removed and set that to null, the other column. So from this, now we have some questions, right? Which we'll go into in the next videos and uh, to the next videos where we have method two and method three. So we know that we have 65% accuracy, it's pretty accurate. But now we did not identify in this one what the values of the predictors are or the attributes. You know, like some attributes, did they do their taxes in 2017, 16, and 15? Or are they married? What's their household income? We want to know how accurate or how important each of those is. And there, there are going to be some that are more important than others. And I'll show you that in a, in a bit here in the next video. Then the other question is, can we make this more accurate? Can we be more accurate than 65% here? Yes, we can. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So stay tuned. This is just video one of a three-part video series on doing classification with random forest uh, models here. And you're going to love this because, again, we're working with real data to determine, you know, is somebody Republican, Democrat, or independent? And the, the beyond that, we're showing you here, how, we're going to show you how to measure attributes to figure out what are the most important attributes for these people. So thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. And be sure and leave me a comment. I love to hear from people that watch my videos and my subscribers. And let me know what you want to see, what you would like me to do next after this, things like that. Thanks again and have a great day.